into my camera? Yes, absolutely. Can you can you hear me all right? One night, my wife got fed up. She recorded it one day, snoring, and then stopping. And I stopped for a good while. I was like, well, what happened? Oh, OK, I just stopped snoring. I went to sleep. She's like, no, you stopped breathing. And then you would hear me <gasps> gasp for air and then go back to snoring again. And it's like, that's what I sound like every night. My name is Aaron Keel. My age currently is 33 years old. Well, I grew up in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, uh, north side, so 33rd and Diamond, 24th and Lehigh. I grew up in that area. You figure activity was all around. Unfortunately, myself, I did no activity. I played no sports, very inactive. I stayed in the house a lot, watched TV, learned how to cook, eat a lot. There was no type of role models around that could actually say, come on, let's take you here and let's teach you this. My mom worked all the time. Hey, I was the only child. So at that point, I really had nothing to lean on. I lived in kind of a dangerous neighborhood to where as though you really had to almost want to stay low key, to stay out of trouble. Trouble seemed to always find you some sort of way. So you kind of wanted to just stay out of trouble. You stayed in the house. I believe I noticed my weight gaining maybe around the age of 10 or 11 years old. And I remember one time uh, in middle school, the gym teacher had us outside. We were playing kickball, as a matter of fact. The gym teacher said, all right, your turn. So I got up there to the plate and I kicked the ball. Well, I kicked the ball rather far. And when it was my turn to run to the base, you would hear the children laughing. Ah, oh, look at this fat, you know, fat guy running, fat boy. They said more than that, but, you know, look at this fat kid running. And it's like, all right, well, how about I'm not playing kickball anymore? When I got teased and taunted about my weight, I really didn't do anything more besides eat. <laughs> I ate more. I didn't do anything to work on. I didn't do anything to fix it. So for me, it was a little, it was depressing. It was, it was really depressing for me growing up. As the years went on, and I'm not blaming my family, it's just a chain of events that happened. I got married. I really stopped going out. I began to work more, had my children year after year. I became more of a house husband, a family man, really centered in my home and my family. Less activity. The less activity I did, the fatter I was getting. So I'm seeing myself every year, and I would say every year, because it seems like every year I would gain about 10 to 15 pounds more. So the next year, if I was 220 last year, well, this year I'm 235. Then I remember being 280, and I remember going from 280 to 290, and I remember going from 290 to 310. I saw myself getting fatter. I looked at myself continuously in the mirror and said, there is another person under here. I don't know how he getting out, but I wish he would come out some sort of way. I've always said that, always said it, always had that somewhere in the back of my brain, somewhere I said that. My heaviest weight was 360 pounds. I will say at 360 pounds, I cried like a big old baby. That was the year that it was just like, I hate life. I hate myself. I didn't even want to look in the mirror. You would never know I was that unhappy though. You would never know it. I would always smile. Hey, how you doing? Oh, all is well, you know, keep moving. Pleasant to everyone. That is me, that is who I am. Unfortunately, when the crowd got thin and the lights went out, I was also a, a unhappy person. I really, I, sad to say I almost wanted to kill myself. I really did, because I never thought that I would be where I am today. I never would have thought that. That I remember going to the doctor I said, well, what about lap band surgery? And she said, okay, not a problem. I'll say about February 2013, I sat at my computer desk at home and I was completing the paperwork for the uh, lap band procedure, answering all the questions. I did the seminar and everything. But I wasn't too happy about going through a surgery. I had never been in a hospital besides having high blood pressure, so I haven't ever had a surgery before. That kind of weighed on me. 
I remember sitting there and I said, well, if you can pray about so many things in life, you can ask God to do this, you can ask him to do that. You can ask him for the littlest things. You've never asked him to help you and to guide you with your weight loss. That's the one thing I have never done. And that particular day I said, I'm giving it over to the Lord. That's something I prayed about. That particular day, I said, this is it. This is the last result. Uh, after this, if this doesn't work, I'm going for the surgery. And I actually went into play. March of 2013 is when I started my weight loss transformation. It wasn't easy. It was not easy at all. Unfortunately, I was uneducated. I was uneducated. I did no research. I did nothing. The struggle was hard, believe me, to stop instantly drinking the soda. <sighs> as bad as I wanted that Mountain Dew. No, I'm just not going to do it. So the first six months, I was winging it. I didn't know what I was doing. I just looked at what I was doing, and I said, stop doing this and try this. This was something that I became determined to do. Because when you see 10 pounds go away, you want to see 20. Now you want to see what you look like with 30 pounds now. And I would say by the time I reached that level of becoming 20 pounds lighter, I wanted to see what, I, wanted, I just wanted to see what was ahead of me. I wanted to see what else the road had in store for me. I would say I was 360 pounds. I was 46% body fat. To date, I am 220 pounds, ranging between nine and 10% body fat. I like it to be in a single digit, but I believe I still have a lot more to do to get to that goal. This transformation has caused me to learn so much about myself. I learned that I can do more than I think I can. I'm actually boxing now. Who would have ever thought that I would be boxing. The advice that I would give to someone in my situation, just do something. Start with something. Do not rely on anyone else to do it for you. They're not running this race. They're not walking your walk. You have to do it for you. If you look back over your life and you think about it, it's why didn't I start this earlier? But sometimes we have to go through things in order to come out of things and to learn from those things, which will help us to transform and transpire into something different.